So they were this sort of Middle Eastern kingmakers that came, the Magi. Um, and quite an extended journey, traveling in quite large numbers, and significantly, they're in the line. We've heard quite a lot about Daniel, but they are in the line of Daniel. Daniel was trained as a Magi. Daniel was promoted along with that. And it's a combination of people that could read signs, people that knew the history, people that could establish what was right for their kingdom. Because the Parthians wanted to see a just rule in Israel. They didn't consider that Rome was a just rule. Yeah? They wanted, they were quite sort of, when they <coughs> took over places, um, they would allow quite an extent people to rule themselves. It was just they were going to be part of this, this, this dominant empire. So what we can say is that the Magi coming to Israel was quite an amazing thing for the Jews because it extended the line that God had introduced in the exile. We've heard lots and lots about the exile and how important that was. It wasn't just a disaster. It wasn't just something that happened and was had no outcome at all. It had an outcome in the fact that one group of people was prepared for the Messiah to come. So Daniel's connection to the Magi connects the people of Israel to God's purposes. And uh, I've got a little quote from one of my people that I like. This is from uh, N.T. Wright, or Tom Wright. And uh, he says... One person on today. Uh, if, you want to, if you want to borrow it, it's really good reading. It's, uh, it only cost me a pound from my shop. So, uh, it's a bargain. Uh, Israel, at the time of the Magi, uh, <clears throat> Israel was a setting of mounting expectation. So Israel was expecting something to happen. Um, the Israel had returned from exile in Babylon 700 years earlier, but still not free. The real return from exile would surely come. So some Jews studied the ancient prophecies for signs. Some tried to calculate the chronological moment when God would act. And others grew tired of waiting for God and decided to take matters into their own hands. Others decided the best thing to do was to intensify their observation of the traditional law, and some hoped, in a fairly ill-defined way, that God would send a king who, as a messiah, would lead them in victory over all their enemies. So this whole mixture of expectation of what God's promised, and now, this is quite important, is that it's God that acts. There is this expectation, there is this uncertainty, there are signs, and God acts. So, the wise men took a gamble. The wise men stepped out and they acted on what they thought God had said. Given the question that they also had all sorts of things going on with astrology. The first thing that comes to mind for me, even as quite a young child, when you talk about stars guiding, yeah, even at quite a young age, I thought, that's really astrology, isn't it? Irrespective of what, whether the sign was big or small, the, 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 the star was more dominant. It is astrology, yeah. So it, uh, it's part of their world picture that God puts into them an expectation of this special Messiah. So they come to, uh, in this story, they come to Herod and they say, where can we find and pay homage to the newborn king of the Jews? So why is Herod so afraid at this point? Why is Herod so afraid? It's a personal threat to him. Being overthrown by Jesus. Yeah. Which he would have been. Yeah, he would have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these guys are recognising a rightfulness. They came in order probably to establish a treaty with the, com the country, they come to recognize the rightfulness of, 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 of the king. They also come 
with a lot of people. It's very, very clear that when this Parthian Empire went to deal with other people, they took huge amounts of people. It's demonstrated in the scripture by the fact that Jerusalem was in uproar. Yeah? Three guys on camels would not <laughs> cause that much upset. This was a major thing that happened to the, to the people. So they came to pay homage to a rightful king and to make a treaty. And this was important for Jerusalem. It was also important for the world. Uh, I'm going to move on at that point and say the, the problem I think we have as Christians is that people will quite happily take on a child's story and say, that's a nice, pretty story. Mm -hmm. The problem we have as Christians is to establish the validity of it as a narrative, that it happened, that it was important, mm -hmm. and it's so current, it couldn't be more current at the moment, uh, to establish what fake news is. <laughs> we hear it every time, I listen to quite a lot of news, and uh, it's one of the current things uh, which we all struggle with, I think. Fake news, is this fake news or not? Um, you can get me just a little bit of water. Uh, Australia is actually moving north. Uh, they're going to have to reset the sat navs in Australia because of its northward movement. Uh, put your hand up if you think that's fake news or true. <laughs> Hands up for fake news. Hands up for truth. Yeah, it's actually true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a woman. In Australia, last year, gave birth to a four-stone baby. In Australia, in Austria, sorry, uh, they have um, just introduced the world's first underwater golf course. <laughs> Austria has the, the world's first underwater golf course in Austria. Well, I think that's fake news. Maybe Australia. You're going to tell us Peru. It's true. Yes. <laughs> in Peru, a Humboldt penguin broke into a family home. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, a humble penguin in Peru broke into a family home. Fake news? It's Peru. Peru. True. It's true. It's true. Uh, this is this is for me. This is the best one. Uh, a young man in Edmonton, Canada, was allowed onto a plane after the security confiscated his bomb, they then gave his bomb back to him. That's true. true. That's true. Yeah, he said, in, in his defence, he said, I forgot it was in there. <laughs> so, they gave, so they gave him it back. So, uh, in Cardiff, they've introduced the first robot head teacher. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, to me, that's really obvious, but all the teachers present. Uh, so, what is it that makes the narrative that we have, the Magi come to see the king, we have tended to go along with the idea of it being quite poetic, it's quite a pretty image. What makes it not fake news? The death of the children? The threat of the children? The death of the children? Anything else that strikes you? We've all had it since we were very, very young as a story. Mm -hmm. We come to it as an adult, and if you're at all like me, you interrogate it, you stretch it out, and you think, mm, does, this, does it go that way, does it go that way? So what makes it true? We're sitting here today saying, the Magi came, it was a significant event, it was an important event for the world. So what makes it not fake news? The details of the children? 
the pro fulfillment of prophecy. Fulfillment of prophecy. Exactly. It's um, I think it's in Micah. It is very good. It. Yeah, yeah. And the star as well. That star is aligned. Good. Up what do you mean by the star? Well, they're a line up of the planets in the solar system, which is very rare. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's perfectly true. There must have been something in the stars. You're absolutely right. There must have been something in the stars that said to these guys, follow it. And that was a mixture of astrology. It was a mixture of their background. They had been taught in the ways of Judaism. They had the influence of Daniel. And well, if, they, if they came from a long way away, they'd got to want something to follow. Like absolutely. That. They it's put... The they, they, for, yeah. They, <laughs> they, you know, they weren't bothered stars in those days. They did. Yeah, yeah. And they started without certainty, because that's I think that's what we get wrong, what I hear so much of in the news, is that not to be fake news, it's got to be absolutely certain. There's very, very, very few things that are absolutely certain, especially something like this, where it's the faith of stepping out, even with a mixture of whole different worldviews and not, you know, the, the teachings of scripture, um, they had to step out. They had to take that first step. And uh, the last part of what I've got to say today is it doesn't mean because it's not certain to us that it's not clear. And that's what's so <coughs> marvellous. So i just read the, the part that I think sticks with us from <coughs> reading this story so often is gold and frankincense mm -hmm. and myrrh. It's those details that not only stick with you, but they underline the fact that it's God that prompted it because yeah. gold is there for the fact of the recognition of kings, a, a royal gift. And it wouldn't have been a trivial gift. <laughs> it wouldn't have been. If you went to China, this is the documented case of going to China, they took a whole camel train of gifts they didn't come to Jesus with a tiny little <laughs> box. They came with an impressive amount of gold in order to establish with Israel a treaty. It didn't work out, and that's a whole part of... I mean, the Bible is full of that, isn't it? It charges up these stories, and it says, well, you know it didn't work out. Herod didn't make a treaty with these guys, the Parthians, the Parthians are a real footnote in history now. You don't you go to the Romans, you go to the Greeks, you don't go to the Parthians. They dwindled out. It didn't establish a treaties. It did establish what God wanted it to do, which was to establish the importance of the event. The gold was for royalty, the frankincense, as the smoke is now clearing, <laughs> is that the incense of the temple. It's the recognition that this is a divine event. It's not just a royal event, it's a divine event. And if you were in any doubt, God then brings in myrrh. And myrrh is the embalming of a body. Mm -hmm. So in that, and this is where you just come back to scripture and you just think God had it all in such clarity that we only just tease out that clarity. So gold and frankincense and myrrh and what does the story of the Magi tell us? The Magi followed the signs that God had given them to the best that they could. They were important and they were powerful historical figures that really happened. And it was Jesus' rescue plan put into action. The last little bit of Tom Wright, Simply Christian. With Jesus, God's rescue operation has been put into effect once and for all. A great door has swung open in the continuum of history, which can never be shut. It's the door to the prison where we have been kept chained up. We are offered freedom. We are offered freedom to experience God's rescue for ourselves, to go through that open door and to explore the new world which we now have access. And that really is what happened with the Magi. The door was flung open. We don't know 
We do not know if the Magi <coughs> took that message back. They must have had some direction from, I think he's called a satrap, but the, the emperor, mm -hmm. um, to go there. So presumably they went back and said what they found. And one of the most important lines in scripture is that they come and they worship. So there's a change there. They've changed from coming as a political emissary to a worshipper. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the scripture. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the door that you opened in eternity. And thank you for Jesus. Amen.